A very good morning. I am a very proud GIT, and I must, I must say this at least twice. <laughs> I have reasons to say so. The best part of my engineering studies in my life happened here. So much so that I remember my roll numbers of four years. 254 first year, 19 second year, 19 third year, and 17 year four. Patnagar sir can vouch for it. Simply because the life that I made here got me to where I am today. You know, when I talk about people and I believe, I always tell about what I call the G story. The very first job that I went to, I was in the final round, and there was a gentleman sitting next to me. And my MBA had taught me to read a pink paper to tell the world that you know finance. So I was reading a pink paper, and this gentleman next to me asked me, which college are you from? I proudly said, GIT. He said, what? I said, GIT. He said, G. I said, Haji. It so went on that I got the job, and I led that company. What I'm trying to emphasize to you today, my friends, is the institute that you come from matters to you, but your self-capabilities of what you believe in yourself will take you places. Remember that this institute, for us in 1990, was the top institute of Karnatic University. I'm today proud that it is doing much more better than what we were. Take it upon yourself to believe in your capabilities. I am a very doting father. So I took both my sons one day, and I asked them, what do you want to do when you grow up? I think most of your parents would have asked this. You know what my son said? They wanted to become a rickshaw driver. I was not amazed. I was not shocked. I was truly happy because I knew why they were saying this. These two boys, with a group of their friends, used to go to school in an auto rickshaw. And Murad owned that auto rickshaw, and he would treat them for an ice cream lolly once a month. Now look at it from a corporate point of view. Murad had an asset of his own. He was an entrepreneur. He had happy clients, and he had customer loyalty program also. And we all want to be a part of such corporates. Why don't we choose careers that make us happy? Why do we try and copy somebody who wants to become something? You know, you GITians, if your girlfriend tells you, baby, I saw you last night in a dream being a CEO, enjoy the moment. <laughs> but if your friends tell you, bro, I think you are a great singer. I think you are a great musician. I think you are a great organizer. Understand those capabilities. Strive to do that better than you would ever do anything else. Because each one of us is cut out to become something very different. We are what we are. We cannot be what we aren't. We cannot be artificial. So what we need to do in this whole thing is very simple. We keep, to keep learning. We need to keep assimilating. There is nothing called vocational calling. It happens in movies. I have heard about many people say that, oh, one fine day, I was sleeping, and I realized that I had to do something different, and I started my company. These are great stories to be. Occasional calling comes from what you believe you can do. I had an opportunity to work with Ram, who was blind, totally blind. And he worked in my company, and he was a marketing telecaller. He would sell real estate on the phone. And along with him, four or five people would also sell real estate. And you know what? Ram had never seen a site. Ram had never seen an apartment. Ram was not able to tell people what that building looks like. But he did all this, and trust me, that everybody who called the telecalling never knew Ram was blind. All they could hear was a smiling voice who gave the right kind of information. Is that hard work? We are all able, and sometimes we feel disabled. Isn't it true that we have these capabilities, but we just want to make a life of luxury? There is a huge difference between making a life and making a living. Most of us try to make a living. Very few of us make a life. It's important to make a living. It's so very important to be where you are. Patience 
is a virtue of very, very, very few people. As you go every step, you must understand that there comes a time to pause, to think, to reflect. I am reminded of this story about a young, brilliant boy who lived in a village next to a single railway track in a hut. And all his life, he dreamt about being a part of the railway department. He excelled at his studies, and it so came to a place that he was called for the final round of interviews. And when he was called for this final round of interviews, unfortunately for him, it was already planned that he wouldn't be getting the job. So this panelist had this great thing given to them to say that, we know the boy is brilliant, but somehow fail him. So they decided to ask him very, very tough questions. So they started by asking him, suppose you are manning a railway station, and you see trains coming in opposite directions, what would you do? Our man was bought, his entire, had spent his entire life next to the tracks. So he said, very proudly, that I will pull down the signals at the manning station and drop, stop the trains in their track. They said, gentlemen, the signals don't work. He was a thinker. So he said, I will use the walkie-talkie and stop the trains in their tracks. They said, no, technology has failed. Walkie-talkies are not working. They asked him, what would you do? So the man looked at them. Our man looked at the panel and said, sirs, I will run home and bring my grandfather. So now the panel was shocked. They opened his file again to see who his grandfather was. But all that they could find was his father's name. And then they asked him, what would you do with your grandfather being here? He said, sir, my grandfather is 91 years old. We've been living in this hut next to the railway track. And he has never seen a train accident. So I'll show him a train accident at least. <laughs> Trust me, he got the job. It's so very important to know in your career what stage you are, who is with you, who is not with you. I am a firm believer in teams. Because as you build formidable teams, you become more successful. That is one part of it. The second part of it is, make mistakes. Because when failure comes to you, and you have teams around you, failure is easier. And then you become successful. The higher you go, the more grounded you need to be. It's very, very important. Because if you learn to handle failure, you will be able to assume success, because that will make you humble. Be passionate, because a leader is a good leader when the organization knows that he barely exists. Because his aims are fulfilled, his job is done, and his team say, we did it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a very proud GITN, Haji. Thank you.